Doctor, thank you. Uh, up next, we have Susan. Susan, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself for the doctor. Hello, Dr. Barnett. I'm a big fan of you and PCRM. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. Um, you're welcome. I, um, I'm hypothyroid, like 25 years, and vegan about nine years. And now I'm suddenly realizing, oh my God, there's lactose in my Synthroid. For one thing, and uh, and then I just recently found out well, the endocrinologist said, well, there's something called tyrosin, but that has pig's pig uh, gelatin or whatever uh, uh, that ingredient in it. So this is a whole new thing of how am I possibly going to get a vegan, a, a, a non-animal product pill? And I, you know, I feel like that's what I want to do. I hear that I saw, saw on a website that in England they might have something, but I'm not in England, you know, and their formulary, they have something called Tiva that people there say is, 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 is vegan. Do you know anything about this? Well, that now you're telling me something new. You're saying that the Synthroid, it's probably as part of the capsule formula, formulation has some, some lactose in it or, or else as a filler. Yes, yes, lactose monohydrate. Yeah, okay. Um, when, when you take any kind of medication, there, the medication is there and then there's some kind of filler that, that, they can, uh, that allows them to make it into a pill. Um, and I did, was not aware of the lactose in the thyroid medication that you're describing, but I am gonna dig into that and if, see if there's something I can learn um, about that further. And I'll share that with the, uh, the organizers of this program. Um, in addition, uh, it's the kind of thing where, where doctors have to deal with this quite a lot, where you have a patient who may even be allergic to something. Uh, yeah. There are people who have a dairy allergy, for example. And so it's not an uncommon thing for a doctor to have to look at all the available uh, medications in a particular class, in this case, uh, thyroid supplementation, to find the ones that don't have those additives in them so that they can be safely given to patients. So let me dig into that. Thank you for, for sharing that information. Great, thank you. Uh, up next, we have uh, DF is back with us. DF, go ahead and unmute yourself, thanks. Thank you, I'm back again. I have a very quick question. Uh, am, is it correct that osteoporosis cannot be reversed once it sets in? Um, so, uh, your, your bones are, are dynamic structures that, that the, the bone structure can increase or it can diminish. Um, and when people have osteoporosis, it can change and it can improve. Um, and it improves, some doctors will use medications for it, but others use the other steps that I mentioned. Uh, having plenty of calcium, and I mentioned greens and, and, and so forth as sources of calcium. Some people will say, go to the store and get some Tums. And what they mean is it's normal calcium carbonate, which if taken with a meal, becomes part of the calcium dose. Um, and then they'll have vitamin D along with, and they'll have exercise. And, and, and no, the, the bone integrity, the bone density can change. Uh, over time, including in people who have been diagnosed with osteoporosis. Excellent, thank you. Um, looks like just a couple of more. We've got Janine up next. Janine, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Thank you. Hello, do Hello Dr. Barna. Thank you for doing this. Sure. Um, I have a sort of a quick two-part question. Firstly, I have been um, whole food, plant-based, I have to admit, with some junk vegan food for the last seven years and have not lost any weight at all. And my second question is um, inflamed, inflamed bursa for many, many years. Um, is there any particular foods or lifestyle changes that I could make that would improve uh, tendonitis and inflamed bursa, particularly when it's very difficult to walk? Okay. Um, first of all, I'm sorry to hear that you're dealing with these issues. Um, it sounds like you have some weight that you'd like to get rid of. And you've gotten, yeah. away, you've gotten away from animal products and the weight is, still isn't coming up. Um, when we have that situation in our clinic or in our research studies, we always do the following thing. We ask the individual to write down everything they've eaten for about two days. And then we lo we're looking at the list for one thing. And that is oil sources, sources of oil, whether it's cooking oils, salad oils, or nuts, nut butters, avocados. And if we find those, we take them out and then we see what happens over the next several days. 
And what almost invariably happens is that when we take those things out, weight starts to fall. Um, and the reason for that is that oils and fats of any kind have nine calories in every single gram. Com if you compare that to um, carbohydrate, whether it's starch or sugars, they only have four calories per gram. So chicken fat, beef fat, any kind of animal fat has nine calories in every single gram. That's a lot. But vegetable oils, even though it's a healthier type of oil, also has nine calories per gram. So if I go to the store and I get organic peanut butter, very natural, locally grown, it's still got nine calories in every gram of the peanut oil that's in there. So those are the foods where if I'm trying to knock off the weight, I'm gonna do a search and destroy for those. You asked about inflammation and specifically inflamed bursa. Uh, the short answer is we don't know what will work for you, but here's what we do, um, what people typically do <clears throat> when they have inflammation. Obviously you wanna see your caregiver and make sure that, that you're looking at any other possible contributor to it. But um, when people have joint pains and inflammation of other types, we often try to see if there are foods that might be contributing to it. What do I mean? Um, I mentioned earlier uh, that certain foods have an inflammatory, uh, inflammatory processes uh, that they can encourage. If I have a patient who's got rheumatoid arthritis, classic uh, symptom where your joints are inflamed and tender and they hurt, um, if they avoid animal products completely, many of them get better. And the reason is we believe is often by avoiding the dairy, the dairy proteins were often a contributor to inflammation. But here's the, the surprising thing. Some people need to go further. Let's say I'm vegan, but I'm sensitive to some other food in the same way as a person can be allergic to strawberries. There's nothing wrong with a strawberry, but if I'm allergic, I can't have them. So let's say my joints are, are reacting to potatoes or citrus fruits or tomatoes or something like that. Um, to, to, there's nothing wrong with any of those foods, but if you're sensitive, you just can't have them. So we do an elimination diet to track that down. And I've described this most recently in my book called The Cheese Trap. In the back of the book, you'll see how to do an elimination diet to see if if foods are triggering your symptoms. And I've given the example of arthritis, but you could do it with any kind of inflammation, including the one you're describing. What you do is you avoid animal products completely. You look at the list of trigger foods in addition to the animal products and avoid them too. It's things like corn or tomatoes or citrus fruits or wheat. And when you take them out of the diet, you discover that your diet is kind of very limited, but you only do this for a couple of weeks and see if your symptoms improve. You're eating a lot of rice cooked vegetables, cooked fruits like applesauce. Um, and then as time goes on, if your joints or, or your, your symptoms get better, then you restore the foods you took out one at a time to see which one triggers the pain. And if you find that trigger, it is golden because then you know you just avoid that food or those two or three foods and your symptoms will be a lot, a lot reduced. So in addition to your medical care, I would, would give something like that a try if it were me. And uh, very often you'll find a trigger and, and it's very handy to identify.